All right, everybody, welcome to back back to part two. If you haven't seen part one, please check it out. I'll include in the link below, as well as all the other links that are gonna be coming along with this video. So this video, I'm gonna be talking specifically about the Open FPGA. If you're looking for more stuff on the other, on the rest of the update, check out the first part. This one is specifically towards the Open FPGA and the GBA and GBC and regular Game Boy emulators that work very, very well. And I'm happy to say that it is really good. I'm blown away how fast clearly somebody already had uh, access to this stuff prior. And this thing came out within a couple hours of the, um, the, uh, the update. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the computer. I'm gonna show you some of the links you need. I'm gonna include all the links in the description. That's very simple, I'll discuss it there as well. But before I go there, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone, and uh, let's get into the video. All right, here is Spiritualized 1997. He, I'll props go to this guy, man. Yeah, you know, he's, it's amazing. He already put Open FPGA GBA and Open, FP, Open FPGA GB and GBC out there for the public. So, yo, all props go to this guy. Yo, this is, this is amazing. He pretty much opened up. This is close to a jailbreak we have at the moment where you can literally just drag and drop the games as, as if you're playing on an EverDrive to the pocket itself. That's awesome. So I, I just got to give all shout outs to him. Um, so, yeah, it's fairly simple here. It's not much else to it. All you got to do is go to the link I'll provide. Click on it. This is all on his page. That was his GitHub. And that's fairly simple. Doesn't take much. You download the latest, obviously you have to have the latest analog firmware. You unzip the content here, which you can find right here. You just download this right here. Drag and drop it to the uh, SD card. Now, you know, a side note, obviously you're gonna have to find the, uh, the uh, GBC and GBA BIOS, how you, Ten, you know how you do that. It's up to you guys. Uh, I will let you decide on how you find that. But if you look at the little side notes here, it says that uh, note that this link port that the link port is fully supported. But unless a GB or GBC cartridge is plugged in, it will run 3.3 volts. Interesting. So I wonder if that it looks like that means that the GBA port that the link port works. So I'm going to test that out also on. On the video that way y'all can see how that works now this is the same thing is going to apply to the GBA uh, pretty much emulator so the same thing download it drag and drop to the to the root, and you're good to go with the BIOS it is fairly simple there's also some some uh, readme files also there if we need to do that so that is pretty cool now if you're interested in getting the Library images like you see right here from Engadget. This is where you have to go. Now this is a 70 something megabyte file, but when you decompress it, it's like almost a gig. So keep that in mind. I have a 32 gig in my uh, analog pocket now, and that's probably gonna get switched to a 64 gig just to probably just to handle it. But I don't know. I mean, I have a 64 gig in my EverDrive right now. I gotta see how much the entire library of of uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance would take. I don't think, uh, I think 32 gig might just cut it. But, you know, we'll talk more about the benefits of still having the flash card. So, but that being said, now we're gonna move over to the pocket itself and just show everybody how it looks there. All right, so we are back. So let's get out of here. So, open FPGA, the cores, they have uh, it's been amazing so far, to be honest. I'm very impressed with it. I'm going to run a couple of tests. I've played a couple of games. It's very easy. You can literally, if you have a way to dump your saves, you can just dump the save uh, from the cartridge and put it in the uh, in the in the folder. I think it's saves, common, GBA or GBC, and you just dump the save there. It's very simple. Make sure the name is the same. And it plays it like like right off the cartridge. Like I had no issue. There's no converting issue. It worked perfectly. Apparently the link cable also works. So I would like to test that. One of the things I will make a note of, and let's start, let's start out with that. 
uh, real-time clock does not work. So this is where something like a um, Easy Flash or an EverDrive, that works, uh, has an advantage. So that does make a pretty good case. And another case for an EverDrive or an Easy Flash Omega uh, is the fact that you can play some other uh, emulators. Now, that's not being said that this won't someday be able to play NES or, you know, Game Gear and all the other stuff. And that's going to be crazy when that happens. I can't imagine playing SNES on this. That, that's going to be awesome whenever that happens. But let's just show you real quick. Let's go to Crystal. And this one, I just copied the same data. It was really simple. And I had no problems copying the same data over. That was just, this is crazy simple. The time doesn't move. Granted, the time was wrong to begin with, but it'll move if I play the game, not if I uh, get out of the game, which is uh, you know, a little disappointing, but that can probably be fixed down the line. I don't know if uh, OpenFPGA will have access to the internal clock. If it does, that's the end of that issue. Um, if you look, let's quit the game. And we just, just went to 1240. Let's go back. Color, run core, and crystal. Let's see, when I checked before, it didn't work. Let's see if it works now. Back to 1239. Okay, so that shows real time clock doesn't work. Let's get that out of the way now. Real time clock does not work. You can still use memories though, 128 slots for memories. Uh, so real time clock doesn't work. Let's run through some tests. I just wanted to test some stuff. Let's check out Open Lore. This is, let's see if this works. I'll be very interested to see if this works. This is a game, uh, Tomb Raider game that they were able to port over to Game Boy Advance. One of the other big things I like to note is that the Game Boy Advance logo, like that's amazing. That shows up and the Game Boy one too. Oh look, it loads. It is still crazy that this game is able to work, to be honest. I'm still amazed at how they were able to get this going. Look at that. Cool. Okay, so that works. Um, let's check another, let's, let's check something else out. Let's do a ROM hack. Pokemon Rocket Edition. No reason why the ROM hack wouldn't work if Open Laura worked. But you know what, let's just run through, run, run through the paces. One of the good thing about this is that you don't have to run it through a converter, change the extension to pocket. You don't gotta do none of this stuff. You have to do with GB, with the GB Studios. And these are Game Boy Advance. The GB Studios could only do Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Right, that one works. Let's test, um, obviously with the Botkai, the sun is in your hand, you need to patch it for the, uh, Solar, if you want to get any, you know, gameplay out of it. Uh, I thought I put, ah, yes, here it is. Let's try a Pokemon video. Let's see how that works. And then what I want to do is try the link trading. I'm going to try with the cable and I'm going to try with the wireless adapter. I want to see how that works. And I'll trade it with an original Game Boy Advance and an original Game Boy Color. Uh, loads up the Game Boy logo. That there you go. I guess not compatible Game Boy player. I guess it wouldn't matter if you have to talk, would it? Would it? Yeah, that's nostalgia right there. Okay, so that part works, no problem. Uh, let's let's see. What else do I have? Uh, ROM hacks work. You know what? Let's do the trades now. What we're going to do, let's do Crystal and Crystal, the same game. The exact same game. I just took the save from here, put it in there. Except this one is old and always gives me issues. This gives me issues. I'm going to have to do it on the, uh, on the flash card. Let me see if I can clean it real quick. Okay, we are back. I ended up uh, just... To a simple way, I put a uh, flash card instead because my old crystal is, well, old. And I'm gonna have to give it another good cleaning. Last time I had to re-solder some pins just to get it working because it's just old, to say the least. Okay, so 
Let's go to Open FPGA and let's go to Game with Color. Let's go to Crystal. Now let's try to trade now. Let's see. It says that the uh, link trade works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold them to it. Let's get the cable. I'm gonna use an original cable here. Let's put this here. Okay, gently. Okay. Look at that, we're there, we're both there already. I think I already tested it out before. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see how it works. Okay. Let's see if it picks it up. Okay, one already did. I think last time I had to start this first and then this one. See, friends, not ready. Okay, so that's what I remember. This happened the last time I tried it because this is faster than this. The FPGA is much faster, obviously. On this one, it's newer. Uh, so I gotta wait till this is done. Or what did I have to do? I also I mean, I had to switch the cables around for some reason. Yeah, I did. You know, let's try switching the cables around. I feel like I did that uh, last time as well. Don't ask me why, but... For some reason, the Game Boy prefers uh, that cable in the pocket. Prefers this one. All right, let's try it again. The fact that that picked it up is a good thing. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, snap. I'm about to curse. All right, that's one up over the pocket. I mean, the um, GB Studios, GB Studios could not do this. Side note, um, my character got turned to a girl doing this trade once. I don't know what happened and it stayed a girl, which is funny. Uh, let's talk to each other. All right, you know, I think from here we're good. Clearly it works. I'm not gonna do another trade. I've done plenty of them before. Uh, let's just see if I can cancel. That's awesome. And let's do a Game Boy. Let's do the Game Boy Advance. No cable on this one. Let's quit it. Okay, no cable needed. Now, the next one we're gonna do Game Boy Advance. So let's go to Open FPGA, Run, and we're gonna do Emerald. I just wanna see if it picks up Emerald. So we got Emerald that I grabbed from here. This is what I grabbed, and the save data. So it's the same, exact same game. Let me put this here for now. I am going to load on the original Game Boy itself. Now, there we go. Look at that beautiful bright screen right there. It's amazing. God, I can't believe uh, how we survived. Okay, so remember if you do wireless, you're gonna to need to remove these pins right here because this will not work on the pocket itself. It's an easy fix if you want. Just buy another one off of eBay if you don't wanna mess up the one you have. That's what I did with this one. I bought one off of eBay. Japanese ones are pretty cheap actually. And you just pop it in. So let's put you here, and I'm sure you can see so clearly. My goodness, wow, man, the color screen makes, makes these games play so good. And now, same game. Okay, here we are. It's so literally the exact same save file from the exact same place. Okay, so let's try this out now. Okay, let's do uh, Trade Coliseum. No, let's do Battle. It works, it should work either way. So let's do Coliseum. Single Battle, Coliseum, Single Battle, Save, Save. Okay, this, saves, this does save faster. Let's make the uh, Pocket Deleter. You join, there you are, it's picking it up.
There you go. Look at that. Awesome. Okay. It's amazing. Link cables work. Yo, this is, that's very good. Let me tell you. Wow. You know, as much as I complain about my EverDrive, the biggest thing you had on this before, uh, right now is the RTC is the only thing this thing has over this. That is literally the only thing, the GB one. Let me tell you, just the GB at the moment. Now, the, Re the Game Boy Advance EverDrive, there is still some, some benefits over over the uh, cores, the FPGA at the moment. For example, NES, to play NES games. Can't do that yet. See, there you go. Can't play any NES games yet. Honestly, I don't see a reason why that won't be happening in the future. That's gonna, I can totally see that happening, <laughs> who knows. And honestly, I don't even see a reason to jailbreak. The, the open FPGA already is good enough. It's going to be great for a lot of people. Obviously, if you want to do more customizations of the of the OS and all that stuff, then yes, a jailbreak will always be beneficial. But for the average user, I just see this being what's going to happen. This is every day for every average user. You just drag and drop. That's the most simplest thing. I don't see a reason why what else you would need. It's It's awesome. And this is much better than playing Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. You have much more functionality. The full screen is unlocked. It's, yeah, it's just amazing, let me tell you. So the Open FPGA, I see this guy has a lot of potential. People are gonna have a lot of fun with it. Let me, let me tell you guys. All right, I'm excited to see what's gonna happen in the future. Thank you everyone for watching. Please stay tuned. I will have more videos when I come out, when I do a more deep dive when I see more stuff. Can't wait for more updates. So I'll have even more videos for that as well. All right, everyone, have a good one and uh, see you on the flip side.